Hey folks, it's Brian. We just finished up with our RQG game for this fortnight. So it is, every two weeks. Anyway, um, things did not go quite as I had envisioned. In fact, I was getting pretty concerned about how deadly this situation could have been. But it turned out to be pretty much just the opposite. Um, so we reiterated in the, if you watch the live plays it's in the description, I was reiterating to one of our players things that happened last uh, session and how it all ended with the giant saber tooth cat killing the horse. And then we did statements of intent and, you know, all the nitnoid crunchiness of RuneQuest combat and it took us a while to get back in the swing of things and uh, there were some questions uh, throughout about different sorts of things and, and changes of intent and well I was planning on doing this but I see him moving and I would have not done that if he would have been doing that and so there's some fluctuations going through as we get back to into the swing of things so There's some, you know, popping here and there, kind of things happening, you know, slings at the giant cat. And then there's the whole issue about shooting into melee with missile weapons and all these slingers. But this cat is a four hex cat. His head is up above everybody else, pretty much. <coughs> Excuse me. So, similar to a situation I ran into during. Um, a troll raid. There's this dark troll in the back, and these two giant beetles in front. Well, the dark troll is you know well above the giant beetle, but we're not flying through the giant beetle combat stuff. You know, shoot over him kind of deal. So, aim shot to the head, bypasses everybody else underneath, no problems. Um, there was one slingshot that did a bunch of damage, or did a significant amount of damage. And then we had a, this whole rule discussion sidebar on <clears throat> slings. Are they missile weapons or thrown weapons? The characters in the scenario don't have a don't have a damage bonus associated with the sling, as a thrown weapon would have half of your damage bonus associated. <laughs> Yet its damage type is concussion or crushing damage, so it's supposed to be a crush. Well, crush does maximum damage bonus, but if you get no damage bonus with it. So I treat it like a uh, thrown weapon for special damage to get that crush. And so it was the, the character had a D4 damage bonus, so it would be D2. So it does max of two points, so it did plus two damage too. And it rolled like a seven, if I remember right. Or maybe it was seven points total. But it was enough to get through the fur, you know, do some damage to the, the cat's hind quarters. And then everybody starts sw swarming on it. Well, not everybody, because at least two of the uh, players and uh, herders continue to attack the Hamakti or Leving girl, killed her. While everybody's going, oh, wait, we need to attack this giant, huge beast thing. <clears throat> That's going to kill us all if we don't do something. And then while they were engaged in that fight, one of the other herding, herders, uh, had used his hate or loving passion to impassion himself with his sling, so he kept firing sling stones at the um, the or loving leader guy, and so he was getting a little. Never got through any of his armor, but he stopped, finally at the point, somebody stop that kid! Or I'm going to kill him. Uh, but one of the players is a. Uh, Stormbolt and has the Berserker rune spell. And he knew some of the stuff, but didn't have an actual copy of the spell description. So I have to get that player a copy, at least those specific parts, so that you can realize what he's getting into when he gets into it. 
And, and what the you know, secondary effects are and, and you know what the benefits are of the spell too and that kind of thing. So I read through it really quick to him. And uh, he and Arestra, the Babista Gore, and Lars have moved up on the cat. The cat does this shifting, and we have this whole discussion about disengaging versus flee versus what this cat did with this whole shift deal. And I've got my own shift rules from the fantasy trip that I was you know, playing off of. Now, there were four people, so technically it was engaged. It took four, well, it takes three, three one-hex creatures to engage a four-hex creature. And I had it you know, just protecting on his horse, you know, spun around so it's on top of the horse, you know, looking at everybody get away kind of deal. And um, instead of just shifting over the top of everybody, making everybody make a deck save or get trampled. Yeah, I, I still don't see it doing that. That's kind of abusive. But anyway, so it turns, so it's not attacking this round. But uh, that that berserker, the Stormbolt Berserker with a great axe, gets on on it and got a critical and then a special. The crit took a leg down. Now, one thing that I, I didn't do, and I I'm starting to see some of the intent of a critical doing max special damage, because if you've got no arm protection versus someone with lots of arm protection. You know, there's no difference if you're just rolling and your armor's getting bypassed. So I'm kind of there's no there's no additional benefit for hitting somebody without armor on a critical. So I, I I'm starting to maybe see that. Uh, but he took the rear leg down, uh, went max negative, but not quite triple. So they're kind of freaked out about that. He did a massive amount, of 66 for the damage with that freaking axe. Uh, special, well, critical armor doesn't protect, but the skin only stop at three points, so not that much of a benefit necessarily. But then the next round, he got a special in the head. I put the head negative its hit points, who so went unconscious. I actually put down to zero hit points, too. Um, and then Lars Spirit just make sure it was dead, kind of thing. Um, but the Berserker still Berserk. He turns, he's these or loving guys who he was tracing after before the cat showed up. So he's getting ready to attack on it. There's enough time between he when he attacks and the action of some of their players, they start pulling these orvalings behind them. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Um and uh, Lars, one of the other players, runs up behind him and does a grapple. I guess a grapple around his neck, head. And um, is able to mobilize. And then <clears throat> I kind of envisioned him doing a chokehold on him. And so we went back and forth between Lars, uh, his damage bonus against the hit points in the head of the, San the Scandor. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the Scandor trying to make an intelligence roll to break out of. His berserker rage, because at this point, all he sees are friendlies. Uh, but after a couple rounds, Lars just choked him out. So, he's unconscious for the rest of the night. They drag him back to camp. Um, they skin the beast, drag the skin and the head back to camp. Oh, two of the... Uh, once the cat went down, and everybody turned on the or Levings, uh, Arrestra with her eyes bla blazing with her tax trances, you need to leave now. And then everybody's kind of coming around. Two of the or Levings just took off. Now, uh, one of the herders did mobili mobility and chased, chased after him. Could he run him down? Yeah, probably. We would be on this whole chasing thing for what benefit? I didn't see what benefit. And thankfully, he needed the player. The player had to come back the next round, kind of thing. Um, but once once they're surrounded and they've got the <clears throat> the beast of gore with the 
axe trance and uh, berserker guy going berserk on him you know okay yeah good to go drop my sword hands up and but the berserk guy is still going after him but then they pulled the the um prisoners prisoners you know out of the way so they had captured them so they got three of the relevings for ransom <clears throat> they took the probably the dead girl back with them too And then there was a whole deep discussion about you know what to do next kind of thing. And then we're, we're being kind of fluid with time. Okay, we're doing this in the middle of the night right now, or we wait until the morning to do it and that kind of thing. And eventually, they decided that uh, they're going to leave Supatai, the uh, hunter, and Boskandor, the berserker, with the herders here with the cattle, and then Lars, the philosopher, and Ingralar, the noble. And um, Arrestra, the Beast of Gore, is some kind of, of uh, bodyguard situation. Take the prisoners in the body and the cat pelt, for that matter, back to um, Swinton, <clears throat> which is kind of the hub for both clans, is the way I envision it. <clears throat> Excuse me, my goodness. And um, either that night, get a chance. To well, they probably get a chance to talk to them until the next day. But they, they interrogate the um, Earl Levings. Lars has got the truth tell spell, so he uses that. And there's just pretty much wants to know what they knew about the cats. Um, was it their intention to steal the cattle? Why were they on Vermandy lands? Um, and is the intent of their leadership to be caught for these guys to be causing trouble here? Is that why they were out kind of deal? And um, uh, he, he took a couple times, forgot the spell right. Um, actually, made most of the power versus power rolls. I need to remind you to make a checkpoint on that. But uh, Lars's player was convinced they were on Formandy lands when the snare actually says or not but that doesn't really come into play unless you're actually looking for things and stuff happening that kind of deal and there's there's a spot in there where i could have pulled it out and i knew there's something in there about that but uh i miss it that it passed by whatever so you know i've had the guys make some homeland lore rolls i was going to think about making some scanning did you ever see any of these standing stones kind of thing but turned out, yeah probably they were in fact on the other side of the border and or levy lands you know you know based upon the territory and you know, what we know of these lands and the hills and that kind of thing you know, probably were over in their space okay so we back down off of that <laughs> off of that line of approach they turn uh, the three prisoners in the body over to uh the thing to work out the whole um uh ransom issue uh for the party and then the next day they're going to go back out uh, they did want to know um if the cat was some kind of a chaos creature and it wasn't uh, and the sense of chaos thing they didn't sense anything there either um shoot i guess that's about it <clears throat> there were a couple of factors that i had removed prior to play and after I saw the way things were going, I put them back in, but the cat never got a chance to actually make an attack. Um, so, well, there was there's a defensive effect that it had, but didn't really apply because the damages that did get through were so massive that they would have gotten through anyway. Uh, and I never got a chance to attack to do extra damage. So, the question is, is there another one? Where is it and what is it doing? Happy gaming.